Welcome to Fun Town Splash Town USA in Saco, Maine. Now I had been to this park last year and did a walkthrough, but there was one ride that wasn't open and it's open this year, so I figured I'd do another walkthrough, a quick one, while I'm here. Um, not much else has changed. Here you see the Barney Oldfield Roadsters, one of the two antique car rides in the park. And we're going to start off in this sort of separate section of the park. Right when you enter to your left, um, you can either go up this ramp or there's a set of stairs under an archway you can go under in order to get into this section. And there are a few rides here, so we'll walk over to them. There's the station for the Barney Oldfield Roadsters. And if you don't know the name of Barney Oldfield, that was the character of Don Knotts played on The Andy Griffith Show. And in the distance, you can see the Splashtown portion of the park. Funtown began um, as a drive-in theater developed by Ken Cormier and his wife in 1960. And he began adding a few more rides to it here and there. Um, uh, more like a family entertainment center. And in the 1990s is when this park began building up to what you see today. And the Cormier family is still involved in the operation of the park. There you can see a Stinson band organ. And it was in actually pretty good shape this year. Sometimes it's a little weak, but this year it was playing really well. And they had a roll of 1950s tunes in it. So hoping I don't get hit with a copyright protection on that, but we'll see. So in this section of the park, there are just a few rides. There's the carousel there. In front of you is a bumper boat arena. There is also on the left, the Barney Oldfield Roadsters that we looked at earlier. And way in the back is Balloon Race, which is a Ferris wheel. And then over here on the right is the ever popular Grand Prix Racers uh, go-kart track. And that does it for this little section of the park over here. And so we'll go back by taking the stairway back over into the main midway. Fun Town is a perfect family park. It has lots of stuff that families can do together. You know, the kind of stuff that I always like, where it's not just a kiddie park and it's not just a teen thrill park, but there's lots of stuff that um, all ages can participate in together. They also have decent food selections in the park too, including veggie burgers. And I'll show you where that is when we get to it. So down that way is the way you get to Splashtown. And Splashtown has grown a lot over the years, and it's one of the most popular attractions in the park. Um, now, when we go up here, there are three different paths you could take. You could go right, which is another little sort of mini midway, or you could go straight. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to make a clockwise swoop of the park, so we're going to bear to the left up here. You could get to the back of the park by going under that archway, just like the archway that got you into the other section we just explored. Notice all the picnic tables um, under the tents here. There are lots of them, and you're free to bring a picnic lunch with you if you want and just sit at one of the tables and eat. Um, but they have pretty good food in the park as it is. I love these dragons here. The beautiful landscaping in the park, lots of flowers. Um, of course, lots of games and lots of kitty rides in a particular section, which we're coming up on. That bear statue is here because we're coming up on the Hungry Bear, which is the largest eatery in the park. And all of the eateries are outdoors. Um, most of them have tables with umbrellas, so you don't have to sit in the sun. Way at the distance there was the sweet shop, which has ice cream and candy. And here's a section of basically a kiddie land with lots of kiddie rides, some vintage Herschel air, uh, helicopters there. Heritage House of Gifts has some of the nicest gifts I've seen at any park. 
They do have themed merchandise uh, for some of the rides in the park. They also have lots of chimes, uh, a lot of glass chimes, very pretty. And over here, we're getting to the back section of Kitty Land. There's another carousel. So two carousels in the park, which is pretty nice. And of course, a big complement of usual carnival games. There are a lot of little winding paths in the park. Uh, we could go left from here, um, but instead we're going to continue on a little bit and then take a left. Over on the left is Astrosphere, which is a really popular ride. It's a scrambler in the dark with a lot of lighting effects and loud music. Over on the right is another picnic area. Hi, Karen. Um, and some more kitty rides in here. There's a good old Tilt-A-Whirl. And that green and purple structure in the distance is a wild mouse. And it is really good. I rode it for the first time on this trip. I'd never bothered before because I'd ridden lots of wild mice. But that one you get a lot of airtime on and some serious side forces, some laterals. It's pretty intense. And here is the newest ride, the Whispering Pines Hotel. Now, last year I thought it was called Catbaticus because there was no name on the building. And um, they had a t-shirt that I bought in the gift shop that said Catbaticus. So I figured that was the name of the ride. But Catbaticus is a character in the Whispering Pines Hotel. And it is one of the best dark rides I've ever been on. It is really, really well done. Highly recommended. Over here, mainly fries, this is where you get a veggie burger if you want one. They have veggie burgers and hamburgs and all sorts of the usual uh, food, buffalo fries. Here's the second antique car ride in the park. Both the antique car rides used to be a bit longer and they were truncated a bit to fit other rides in. Over here is Casino, which is a Trebant ride that's nicely themed. And coming up in front of us is a beautifully landscaped kitty train ride. Now there is another way to get to this section of the park. We could have gone up a set of stairs and then over a series of ramps and that would have taken us further off to the right. But I wanted to take us around this, staying on our clockwise route. And over here is the flying trapeze, which was still being worked on when we were there. And that should be back in shape pretty soon. And just beyond that is Thunderbolt which is like a Matterhorn Himalaya style spin and barf ride. And the pirate ship is also in front of us. And in the distance you can see the big drop of Thunder Falls, which is a really nice flume ride. Now I'm not gonna walk all the way through where it says the Coca-Cola cool zone there, which those are misters uh, for hot days, cools you off. But beyond that um, is the entrance to Excalibur, which is the calling card of the park. It is the largest wooden coaster in New England. It's a really good ride. This year, they retract a significant portion of it, and it's running phenomenal. It is an out of control ride. You never know what the heck direction you're going in. It's really fun. Um, another little gem in this park that has a lot of little gems. I mean, it's a really beautiful place that isn't really well known in New England, and I wish it was. I wish more people would come here. But the park is really popular with the locals, as you can see. Got a lot of people in the park, and this was early in the day. And we'll pause here and watch the flume come down. You don't get too wet on this ride. The entrance to Thunder Falls is over here on the left. And we are going to cross this bridge on the right, and that will put us back at Mainly Fries.
There's a lot to do in this area of Maine. Nearby is Old Orchard Beach, which itself has a small amusement park that I've done a walkthrough of. And um, there's also, not too far to the south, a Gunquit Beach, which is a really beautiful area. So plenty of stuff to do in this area if you're in Maine. Over on the left, this photo booth is doing double duty. So kids can get a driver's license um, from the antique car ride um, if they were driving it. Or you can get a picture of yourself on Whispering Pines hotel ride. There's the wild mouse, and we're going to bear to the left up here. And this will take us back toward the entrance. I'm really glad they have so much shade in this park. Makes it very pleasant walking through it. Here on the right is the Dragon's Lair Arcade, which is the biggest arcade in the park. It has the usual assortments of video games. They used to have an arcade where the Whispering Pines Hotel is, a very small one, and it had the only pinball machines in the park, and those, unfortunately, are gone. So with that, it brings us back to where we started off. We took a right over here and headed that way. But there is still one little section of the park that we haven't explored, so we'll go take a look at that area of the Midway. The park's 220-foot-high drop tower is called Dragon's Descent, and they have this absolutely incredible sculpture out front. And there are two ways to get through, so we're going to hang on the left here and walk around. It's just a beautifully landscaped midway for just a single ride. There's nothing else in this area. And there it is. And it is very high. So that pretty much concludes our tour of Funtown Splashtown, USA in Saco, Maine. Um, we love coming to this park, and whenever we're in the area um, every year, we always make it a point to stop here. We don't spend a lot of time here, but um, they do have a senior discount, which is good for us. Uh, and uh, we just love the atmosphere of the place. It makes us feel happy just to be in here. Everything is brightly colored, beautifully landscaped. People are friendly. The help is wonderful. Food's good. Um, and the rides are really good, too. Excalibur is a first-rate roller coaster. Whispering Pines Hotel is a phenomenal dark ride. Um, so I'm really happy to see that the park is succeeding, and it's continuing to thrill people in southern Maine. So when you're in this area, by all means, check out Funtown Splashdown, USA.